Brian and Brian. Three. Brian had enjoyed the two-hour flight from Wellington to Auckland, a circumstance that buoyed Mary and Zach's optimism concerning their 24-hour odyssey. Their hour layover at AKL had been spent in virtually non-stop movement as Brian's parents wisely tried to spend some of their son's stored energy prior to the 12-hour Trans-Pacific leg that would follow. Brian, having enjoyed his first foray into the wild blue yonder, eagerly boarded the much larger bird that would wing the family eastward through 19 time zones. The child traveled remarkably well as his parents took turns, alternating between entertaining him via electronics, strolling up and down the plane's aisle, and engaging him with books, games, and general silliness. Nonetheless, everyone on board the transoceanic transcontinental flight emitted a hurrah of relief upon touchdown, with none louder than the Browns. The long layover at LAX proved at least as exhausting as flight had been, but movement, which was readily available, was utilized between quiet time and naps on the carpeted floor of the airport. There is an insipid piece of logic that compares a woman's pain during childbirth to a man's agony when need with great force in the testicles, a.k.a. racking. This comparison's conclusion is that being racked must be far worse than giving birth because after enduring the agony of being racked, men will thereafter take exaggerated precautions to ensure that they never again undergo the pain of testicular torture, while many women will willingly and with rapt joy endure labor pains time and again. Therefore, goes the argument, racked balls must hurt more than does giving birth, QED. This all men are Socrates string of thought concerning the relative miseries of labor versus racking ignores and negates the essential element of temporarily enduring pain for the sake of an extended reward. Thus, many women willingly embrace the discomforts of pregnancy and the pain of labor time and again for the sake of procreation, while the excruciation of testicular tumulant with its lack of commensurate compensation of long-term bliss is avoided. A grapes to pears comparison, if ever there was one. Zach reminded himself of the nobility of pain endured for the sake of a greater reward for both Mary and Brian as he presented their airline tickets to the attendant at the LAX gate and boarded the plane that would land in Puerto Vallarta a mere three hours after takeover. Three hours, he said to Mary, who had settled into the center of three seats, produced picture book, and was valiantly trying to engage their son in a diversion that would make the comparatively short flight fly by. Maybe we'll get lucky and he'll fall asleep, he added. And a dream is a wish your heart makes, my fine cinder fella, Mary replied, eyebrows arching skyward. We can hope, but I'm not counting on it. Me neither, Zach said with a sigh. A week plus of Fun in the sun and frolicking in the surf along with not being separated from you is well worth the price of admission. It'll be like our trip to Sydney, BB. Ah, yes, before Brian. Different life, wasn't it? Do you miss it? Having you all to myself, traveling on a whim, enjoying the posh spots? Zach asked, squeezing his wife's name. Me? A, a bit. But I was meant to be a dad, and you, my lovely, are a mother's sane party. How did we get so lucky? With each other or with Brian? Indeed. He replied with a wink. Now, if only we can keep Mr. Why We content until we touch down, then life will be perfect as opposed to next to. I'm far from perfect, Mary said with a wink. Ouch! Was that directed at me? I mean, I'm sitting next to perfection, and you're sitting right next to the most perfect three-year-old on the planet, after all. Touché, Mary acknowledged. Let's just hope he lives up to his billing for the next three hours. Well, at least it's a whole new crop of fellow travelers that Brian gets to entertain. I think we'll be fine. Here's to wishing and hoping and dreaming and planning, Mary replied, lifting Zach's hand to her lips and kissing it. Amen. Uh, Dusty Springfield? Yes, Mary beamed a smile. Wow, you can be taught. Oh, I'm coachable, though. Right now I wish we'd sprung for first class, at least to Los Angeles. Why, why we not go? Brian demanded from his seat. Any minute, dear heart, Mary replied, tossing her son's hair. They're just closing the door now.